the next topic, it will be about accepting crypto as a mean of payment for merchants. Maybe you don't know, but this year companies like Gucci, like Balenciaga are accepting Bitcoin and some of the Ethereum as payment method for the goods. So in the next panel, Ms. Mirella will uh, moderate this topic. Hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, staying uh, till uh, almost the last presentation of today. Uh, yeah, again, I'm Mirela Ciobanu, senior editor with the papers. We are an online publication that covers news about payments, banking, fintech, uh, crypto, you name it. Um, today we are going to talk about why should merchants uh, offer uh, crypto as a payment uh, option. And as a short intro, I, I noticed a few things happening in uh, our society. Not necessarily Romanian, but mostly Romanian. So we had uh, earlier Vlad's grandmother sending uh, emails, so very familiar with the digitalization. Then I have uh, my daughter that um, uh, she received a coloring book from um, somebody that works in the crypto space. And she was reading about uh, the invention of Bitcoin so naturally, like reading Little uh, Red Riding Hood. So she said, Satoshi Nakamoto, whose real identity is still secret, created the first official cryptocurrency Bitcoin, and she's only seven. Uh, then um, we have Aline that uh, earlier sent some money via WhatsApp. So everyone is very familiar with uh, digitalization. And in a way, it kind of makes sense that uh, we embrace new digital ways of, uh, of paying. And uh, so far, we discussed about uh, potential of uh, digital uh, um, payments to stimulate, um, so uh, like we, we had the COVID crisis, to, to stimulate economies, to uh, give money to, to, uh, to people. Then we talked about crypto as, uh, crypto as a mean of uh, investment. But now I think it's time to also discuss about uh, other applicability applicabilities which are important and have a commercial proposal and these are uh, yeah payments so we are a bit um, detaching from uh, the previous panels that we are not focusing on um, using the bitcoin or other uh, crypto means to to invest so uh, mostly we are going to talk about crypto payments universe uh, what are some uh, misconceptions and ba barriers of crypto adoptions for merchants? What are some uh, adoption drivers? And uh, yeah, to see what the future holds. And for this, I have uh, my guests that have a wealth of experience in technology and also in uh, um, interacting with um, uh, merchants and also interacting with the local market and lots of experience in payments. So I'll ask uh, yeah, uh, each one to, to uh, present themselves and say something uh, about their position. Okay. I um, represent uh, Danubius. Who has who is um, have more than fifty percent from the fiscal uh, uh, um, equipment from from market and um, try to be innovation uh, try to be first and in innovate and uh, digit uh, this market and. Uh, to be first to improve this part of uh, payment, fiscal, and uh, be one of um, break uh, uh, some some barriers. Okay, I have uh, experience in retail, in management, and. Um, I be here uh, like um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> this you. is me. Thank you, Alin. Okay, Stefan. So, let, let me use that. Oh, hi. I'm Stefan. I'm from Ali, Romania. Uh, together with some uh, uh, colleagues from Slovenia, we have a tool. It's called uh, uh, Go Crypto, and this tool enables to connect the crypto world with the real world, meaning that. 
uh, using go crypto we can buy a coffee using cryptocurrencies so starting with that we are trying to build to bring in this this world uh, through apis through pos's this connection and uh, in this moment uh, we have more than 1000 shops around the world who are, are using uh, uh, go crypto as <laughs> payment method and we are present in more than 30 countries uh, with GoCrypto connected through APIs to the ERPs, to Horeca solutions and other software solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Peter? Hi, uh, my name is Peter. I'm uh, here on behalf of uh, Infineo. This is a new startup and what we aim for is to simplify the way you manage your uh, financial life. Regardless what type of, uh, let's say, digital asset or fiat currency you own. And let's just ask in the room, how many of you have uh, bonus cards, loyalty cards, and using them? Okay, so we are already using digital payments because we are using those points to pay uh, or have discounts to uh, what you are using in terms of gas station whatsoever. So. If you ever ask yourself if I'm going to use digital currencies, the answer is yes, you're already using it and you didn't know that, so. Hello, uh, my name is Christian. I'm the technical guy be behind Infineo. Uh, my background is uh, in informatics, of course. And uh, what we try with Infineo is to bridge uh, the gap between uh, fiat and uh, digital assets. Hello, my name is. It's working? This one? Or? If not, we can try. Okay. Yeah. My name is Horia Grozia. I'm not Nick Bolaciano. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> head of sales at uh, Netopia Payments, the biggest payment processor uh, in, uh, in Romania. Thank you. To warm up the atmosphere, we'll start with a, a quick one. <laughs> so, uh, Stefan. When talking about crypto digital money CBDCs, what problem do they solve? Uh, from my point of view, uh, bringing this kind of currency in the real world doesn't solve anything. It just bring another tool to be used uh, by the regular consumers to pay their, uh, their, their goods, their vacancies, their, their homes and things like this. So from my point of view, using the uh, cryptocurrencies or other stuff related to that, uh, will just widen the ways in which a customer can, can fulfill its dreams. Okay, Peter, would you like to complement? Um, I don't necessarily believe that they are solving an issue, but the thing is that they are a new uh, asset class which are there to, uh, to stay, so uh, you can't just simply can't disregard that. So uh, I strongly believe that all these digital assets are going to, it's just a matter of time when they are going to come into the mainstream and they will be widely used by regular consumers as well. So. Okay, so you mentioned here two uh, big keywords, asset class and uh, average consumer. Here I noticed that uh, many of us uh, use uh, synonyms all this. Uh, stable coins, cryptocurrencies, central bank digital currencies, we all put them in one back bucket. And I want to take advantage of Christian's technical background to explain what are cryptocurrencies, what are stable coins and central bank digital currencies. Like I, I am a five year old, so I uh, lowered the barrier because Vlad was mentioning about 12 years uh, yeah, explanation. And what are some key differences between uh, these types of digital money? Okay, so cryptocurrencies is a form of uh, digital currency that is encrypted using cryptography. But uh, if I wanted to explain this to a five-year-old or to my grandma, I would say they are digital money. Uh, stable coins are uh, a form of digital currency that is pegged uh, to another fiat currency. For example, uh, in this crypto world, uh, the most used uh, stable coins are USDT, USDC, BUSD, all of them which are uh, pegged to the dollar. Uh, what does this mean is uh, that uh, the stable coin is backed by uh, uh, fiat resources or by other assets. And uh, as you know, in the case of USD and Luna, everyone knows about USD and Luna. Yeah. 
uh, it was uh, back to the dollar using an algorithm. And, you know, algorithms are, uh, are unstable, can be hacked, and so on. And we can be attacked. In this case, it was an attack. Uh, CBDCs are a, a digital currency that is uh, emitted by a central bank and the respect to the fiat currency of that uh, country. Uh, the main difference between CBDCs and the other cryptocurrencies is the fact that it is mainly centralized. Uh, they do not need uh, blockchain and consensus if they uh, do not want to use them. Uh, but they can provide stability and safety for uh, people. Okay. Uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, of course, are uh, uh, more volatile. Uh, the price of the cryptocurrency is given by the market, the sentiment, and uh, so on. Okay. Now that we defined uh, what we are playing with, uh, I think that a natural step would be for us to see who are the people that are using uh, crypto. So now we are uh, narrowing down the discussion from yeah, CBDCs and stable coins to, to cryptocurrencies to see exactly what are the users. And before we stick to the local uh, market, what I found in a Nuve report, they are uh, PSP, but they also have um, some, they developed some uh, rails for accepting crypto payments, uh, is this fact that uh, despite, uh, yeah, we saw a statistic earlier from iSense Solutions when it comes to investors that adoption is high. When it comes to crypto payments, adoption is low. And usually the demographic in general across the world involves uh, millennials, males, uh, with an average annual income of uh, 100k. Also an interesting uh, statistic comes from uh, Visa's crypto uh, phenomenon report that says that uh, engagement with cryptocurrency is inversely proportional with age. So the youngest you are, the, most, uh, the more uh, prone you are to use crypto. And also, engagement with cryptocurrency is stronger in emerging markets. So these are general dates acro across the world. So the, the youngest, uh, if you are male, if you are uh, young, up till uh, yeah, 35, and have um, m more than a medium income, you are to use uh, crypto as a payment method. But now I will go to Horia, and uh, yeah, I would ask who is paying with crypto now here in uh, Romania? and to present the I, average uh, Romanian... Um. Okay, I, I can confirm that, uh, that information that you have uh, from international uh, uh, part. And uh, what I can say is that uh, uh, from a local point of view, uh, the main payers are the ones who are receiving their, uh, their salary, or, mm, we cannot say any salary, but payments in crypto, just uh, like uh, freelancers or uh, IT guys, uh, designers, and so on, and also uh, the miners, uh, the one who uh, earn cryptocurrency and they need to spend it uh, or to uh, or to convert it to uh, to fiat. They don't want to convert it to fiat. They need to spend it on different. Uh, products and uh, services. So uh, we, s we saw this, uh, this type of, of uh, consumers in, in, uh, in Romania. Of course, they are male, they are millennials, they, they have uh, um, revenue over the uh, average. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, what uh, uh, we can see is not the investors or the long-time investors who are paying with crypto. Uh, more than the uh, IT guys, freelancers who are paying uh, for, uh, I don't know, <coughs> ITNC, travel, services, and so on. Yeah, but uh, now uh, open question to, to all. It is interesting that uh, if you think about consumer, a big potential, especially in shopping e-commerce, comes from... Uh, yeah, women, mothers that uh, organize uh, uh, household and do the shopping and everything. There is lots of potential there. How can this potential be... be uh, uh, sorry? We have online, Stefan? Okay. <laughs> uh, this was a special guest, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, Stefan. It's great that uh, we, have, we have you online. 
Hello. Can, can you hear us? We can see you, but a bit shaking. I can hear you very well. Okay. So this is also an open question to you. But uh, first, if you want to say a few words to our public about sure, yourself sure. and uh, your uh, background. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, I'm pretty much used to being the biggest man on the stage. In this case, I think I'm, if I remember from the last conference of last year, the people that were on the screen seemed like Big Brother from 1984. <coughs> I think I'm fitting this role right now. Uh, so thank you very much for having me. I've got a background in the crypto space from uh, very early on in its inception. I think I've been working in crypto since 2015. Uh, started an agency, uh, ended up building blockchain solutions, quite a lot of them, I think over 30 published uh, products with users. And I also uh, launched and in the meanwhile exited a uh, stablecoin uh, startup uh, called Aurus. We had 100% uh, gold-backed cryptocurrency and a couple of other precious metals-backed cryptocurrencies as well. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Thank you. So, I was saying about uh, this uh, potential coming from, uh, yeah, female um, users of, of crypto when it comes to, to shopping because merchant and, uh, yeah, buying stuff is not only about technical or... So, how can we tap into this potential? I know that, but uh, if you know the type of the investor in, in crypto, you'll see that everyone want to have uh, uh, rapid gains and uh, or invest in long terms. The one who are uh, using crypto for uh, payments are the one who uh, need to spend that crypto and they don't uh, convert it to fiat at ATMs or uh, something like that. They just want to pay with them. Uh, uh, from my point of view, I don't think they pay with crypto because uh, they uh, feeling they. I think they pay because they need to pay because they don't have. Uh, real money and they need to uh, buy products with uh, the money they earn from their services and uh, they, are, uh, they are providing. Okay, so now we see... So it's a long, it's a long journey until the house, uh, housekeepers <laughs> will, <laughs> will pay with the cryptocurrency. But first let, let's clarify a bit what are the early adopters of crypto and here I'm re referring to what verticals are more prone to use uh, crypto. Christian, do you, would you like to...? Uh, yes, uh, I know... I don't want to sound I... feminist because, yeah, you'll see the answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I have uh, uh, a story to tell about this, uh, the early uh, adoption of crypto. Uh, I have a friend of mine and me myself was playing video games uh, and you know back in I think 2007 2008 I don't know exactly uh, there was a Warcraft tournament which a friend of mine won and he won uh, 120 Bitcoin I think uh, so uh, that was what, what year was it uh, I don't know 2008 I think <laughs> so 2010 I don't know Exactly. Um, the thing is, uh, we talked uh, last year about it, and uh, he was telling me that he was uh, uh, very happy that he can buy skins over, uh, I don't know, a market that was uh, accepting Bitcoin payments at the moment. Uh, and uh, uh, was talking about the fact that now he would have been a millionaire if he would have kept his Bitcoin. So at the full, uh, early stage of crypto, of Bitcoin, uh, we know the story of uh, the payment for a pizza. We know that uh, crypto was used, I don't know, for uh, uh, different platforms, freelancers, uh, and so on. I think this, is, was, this was the inception. Yeah. Alin, other uh, segments, other industries that uh, are early adopters of crypto? I think uh, the industry for uh, uh, gambling. Gambling, okay. And uh, industry of um, leisure, maybe. Yeah. Yes. Stefan, are you still with us? Can you, I don't know, compliment? Yes, I'm still with you. I think uh, defining the 
crypto target market, the crypto persona is a quite a difficult challenge at this point. Um, I would separate the market into two key segments. Um, that's pretty much the way I kind of saw that it uh, acts out over time. I would say that the market separates into the veterans, the people that have been investing into crypto for a very long time. They understand the ups, they understand the downs, and uh, they kind of understand the technology at a slightly deeper level. I think you can also separate this faction into um, two other ones. Um, some of them that are there because they believe in the technology and what it can bring over the future. Um, these guys are aware that right now uh, solutions aren't necessarily tailored to a very sustainable use case um, that can grow over time. And then there's sub-segment B, let's call it, which um, I think invests just for the, uh, for the randomness of, the, of it all and therefore for the insane potential of capital gains. And then the second key component of the market would be um, people that are insecure about whether they want to get into crypto or not. They kind of hang out at the surface. You've got a very big churn rate between these people. Some of them join, some of them leave, and then so on and so forth. And these guys latch on to whatever they have uh, um, heard that could have quite a lot of potential. Um, in terms of demographics, I think the market is mostly male at this point. Uh, given that there is a technical uh, inclination that you kind of must have in order to be comfortable with interacting with cryptos. And obviously uh, in the younger demographic as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, now we are going to take uh, the discussion from theory and then to practical. So let's think, uh, let's imagine, Peter, that we have a successful, uh, so no, we have a merchant that is embracing crypto payments successfully. How would this uh, theoretic journey look like? First of all, I think we should define what it means to be successful in terms of transaction or performing a transaction. Transaction, okay. user experience, One, okay. yeah. And then secondly, I don't really like the term crypto. It sounds like dodgy, like really dying somebody. So I would rather refer to <laughs> it as digital, digital asset, okay. if you don't mind. And I think here's worth doing a distinction between currency as a digital asset and uh, digital asset as loyalty points, voucher, meal vouchers, uh, voucher, gift vouchers, and whatsoever. Because everything that is not on paper and can be traded or exchanged in an ATM, it supports some digital stuff that is a digital asset that you have and you use it in exchange of uh, some goods. So that is a, we consider that as a success? I would say yes. Just imagine how many uh, meal vouchers are you using or these cards that are under electronic format and you buy goods and grocery shop. So that's a successful transaction. Now, if on top of that, you add a bit of complexity. Let's say that on that digital card that you have as a meal voucher, you don't have enough funds, but you still go to Lidl, Carrefour, Ocean, Kaufland, whatsoever it would be, and you want to pay something. And uh, then you just want to pay, and instead of mentioning that, can I pay with two cards? Because usually you pay with your uh, meal voucher card and then you just scoop around for the ING, Unicredit and all your bank cards just to fill in uh, the, the rest of the amount. So a, su a successful journey would be when you go to uh, the cashier and you don't need to mention, can I pay with two cards? But just simply take out an app or a simple card and just perform the transaction so that the merchant doesn't really know exactly what happens in the background in which you basically you can select as with our uh, solution, you'll be able to select which accounts will be debited, when, from where, and how those are going to be debited based on your own preferences. So if you go at a, any merchant or whatever, Lidl, whatsoever will be, and you are able to use your meal voucher, for example, or any loyalty card, I mean, imagine that you go to the pharmacy, Catena, okay, you have that loyalty point, and you want to use partial loyalty points and partially you want to pay with fiat or something else. You will be able to do that with a simple app. This is what I call as a use case and a successful use case. How actually from jur customer journey perspective should, uh, should go. Okay. And now let's um, get our hands dirty and see exactly what's happening on the market. So, Horia, I think you have some examples of uh, Romanian merchants that are... Uh, Be yes, a big, a big Romanian uh, online merchants that uh, launch um, uh, crypto payments 
uh, more than seven years ago, we launched it with... Uh, also, please give some, some uh, Yes, PC, PC Garage, uh, F64, Evomag, uh, uh, Quick Mobile, and also uh, after that we... Uh, Uh, integrated at uh, Vola, which is the biggest uh, uh, air operator, uh, Leisure, and other uh, and other merchants from other categories. And in the last year, w we observe that we have um, merchants from uh, auto, auto industry, and also. Um, um, In apartments and um, I, I don't know how to say real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate, uh, real estate merchants. Um, in the last seven years, we managed to integrate uh, dozens of uh, online merchants. Um, we also have uh, merchants that deliver food. <laughs> like Vuxing, that you can buy with Bitcoin or with the gold uh, uh, meals, Chinese food. Uh, of course, uh, most of the integration uh, was for uh, PR meaning, of course. But uh, if we go back to the uh, merchants from uh, ITNC, like the big ones, they have uh, thousands of... of, uh, of uh, of transaction in the last seven years. Of course, with ups and downs of the market, uh, the same, uh, the same uh, was uh, the transaction made. Um, we have um, transaction made uh, five years ago at, uh, at Evomag, we, uh, some miners uh, buy uh, some equipment with uh, eight or ten uh, bitcoins, because the bitcoins uh, has uh, a lower price. Right now, of course, <laughs> there are bigger, bigger amounts. Uh, and um, I think uh, uh, we ed try to educate the, the market um, to integrate this uh, new payment option. Um, and uh, create a easy, uh, a easy way, not only for uh, the technical point of view, also uh, for financial point of view, because we are um, give, uh, give them um, a lay, local currency, not give them a cryptocurrency. We uh, manage uh, to exchange the transaction when the transaction is done. So uh, from uh, their point of view, there, uh, there is no uh, problem with, uh, with, uh, with the payments. So I think this was our um, uh, main thing that we done for them. Because if uh, we don't do this, uh, the adoption was, was, was be no lower, yes. May I add something? I think Adoption will increase once people or merchants will understand that behind, we will understand the process behind. So basically, I think they are scared that they are, they don't know how to put that into accounting when it comes to exactly. crypto, how I will account that, that in my books. That was the main problem. And that's the main issue. So yes. when merchants will understand that they won't feel anything and they will actually will see fiat or ordinary currency that you are used in a daily basis, and basically you will see only one transaction performed But in the background, there are multiple processes taking in place, like the exchange, conversion, and so on and so forth, which they shouldn't bother because the platform or different solutions will take care about that. You just need to agree and expand your customer base by allowing that type of uh, payments or processes. So explain, you explained a bit the process behind in terms of settlements and who does what, but in terms of technicalities, Stefan, maybe you can add something How is the, uh, I mean, do the merchants need extra technology, is it? Uh, from, from our point of view, they don't need nothing. They just need an app put on their POSs. So uh, my point of view, we need, uh, from my point of view, we need to uh, set some two things before everything. One of them is to explain to every, sh every shop owner of, or any merchant that uh, paying with crypto will not mess his accountability. 
This is the first thing that they should uh, understand because if I pay with Ethereum or Bitcoin or whatever, they will receive lay in their account. So this is the first thing that they need to understand. Secondarily, uh, the, the, the market needs a lot of examples. So if I would be a merchant in a corner of the market selling bread, okay, and if I'm, I, I will see my opponent, my, my, uh, my competitor selling the same thing using crypto, I would do the same thing myself because this is how the market is work. We need we need a lot of um, we need a lot of information to be launched on the market. We need a lot of advertising, and these things will come in time. You know, we cannot educate uh, the mar market using a shot, okay, or something like this. We just need to give them time in order to be to understand and to ha eliminate their fears from from this this kind of uh, work of with cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies that from our point of view they can see the cryptocurrencies because we can deliver the cryptocurrencies in their account in their account or we can we can split we can change them into regular fiat money meaning lay according to our fiscal code and we deliver in the in the next day in their account. So from our point of view this is a, a normal process that sh everybody should embrace it later or, or uh, faster. And uh, if they do that, they will uh, open the, uh, their doors to another 300 million possessors of uh, crypto wallets in the world. So from my point, yeah. this is how the market should be teach to work, to do, to work from now on. Just let me add on that and building on that because actually loyalty points from any merchant perspective, it's harder to manage than accepting crypto payments. And I'm explaining you the rationale behind. All the loyalty points that you are giving out as a merchant that goes into you as a debt into your books, because it's something that you own to somebody who has 20 points that value something. So managing all that from technical point of view and from accounting point of view, it's much harder than accepting the fact that you can accept payments that are done in the same time with fiat or crypto, it doesn't really matter. So just to, from a technical point of view, it's much easier to adopt payments with digital currency than implementing a total new loyalty program as such. Okay. So Stefan mentioned here the fact that uh, lack of information, of uh, advertising, of uh, real examples is uh, stopping uh, merchants from accepting crypto. Uh, Alin, what other blockers do you find in the market besides uh, besides this? Blockers is a lot, uh, like uh, a lack of uh, information, and, uh, access to crypto for large uh, for for mass, and. Um, Maybe something related to volatility. Volatility, I don't know. Who takes care education of volatility? Uh, is a lot of, of, of issues. Yeah. Yes. But uh, an open question to all uh, my guests Who takes care of the volatility risk of crypto for the merchants? But because because they are uh, they receive fiat when you make the payment, the volatility uh, they do not care about the volatility. The volatility uh, is in the hands of the payer. Uh, another blocker that I might see uh, is the KYC and the AML, for example. That is a blocker. For example, if you want to pay uh, for a house or a car, you cannot make the payment uh, using your, um, I don't know, digital currency debit card from Binance or another merchant. You have to go through regulations. Uh, I don't know how fast they are at the moment because uh, uh, the regulations are uh, still to be implemented uh, as we speak. So, but, for me, but we sell cars, <laughs> we put yeah. in more than one hundred thousand euro, uh, and we made uh, we made KYC, of course, based on the regulation, and after that we made the transaction and accepted. Of could course, you, could you we name the bank that you are working with regarding? Uh... It was not a bank. It was a transaction with crypto. Ah, the bank that we process deliver the process the, the, the payment. payment. Our acquiring bank. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot tell. Okay. <laughs> tell okay. So, uh, 
Yeah, I think I can uh, add some, some more uh, details on this uh, issue. Uh, volatility, okay, let me put it like this. Volatility, it's, it's uh, taken as a, a weak point of the crypto, okay? But let me put it like this. If Bitcoin will be $100,000, okay? Would you be interested to go and to, to do something that you never did before because uh, the, this service it was too expensive for you? I, I, I'd, I'd ask this, this question to everybody because in, uh, uh, let me put it like this, in uh, medical tourism, in uh, beauty surgery, uh, they are widely used, the cryptocurrencies, to pay this kind of services. So, uh, up from our point of view, working in offline crypto payments, we can pay daily up to 15,000 euros to everybody. So, I don't think it's a, it's a problem to buy a house. If, if the, even the house this cost, you can pay it in 10, 20 days, no matter how big the house is. You can pay your, your services, you can pay your, your coffee, you can pay your leisure, you can pay everything. So from my, my point, our point of view, from Go Crypto point of view, it's, it's something uh, doable and it could be improved in time. So there is no, no catch, there is no, no stop in using how deep you want the, the, the cryptocurrencies in paying your, your uh, needs. So volatility is a misconception then for... Uh... I think so, because uh, volatility, it's up and downs. And if you think at the up, this is not volatility, this is, this is gain. If it's on the bottom side, this is loss. So from my point of view, we just need the, the good part of everything, because in this way we can... Uh, how okay, can educate ourselves to, to use crypto in our, in our uh, account, in our favor. Okay. And now for Horia, because you are working <laughs> with merchants, how can crypto payments influence uh, a level of fraud and chargebacks? In cryptocurrency, we don't have chargebacks. <laughs> so, no. uh, and are the merchants, <laughs> exactly, that's why I asked, are the, the merchants aware of this uh, fact? Yes, they are aware. Uh, the ones that the This is the sales proposition <laughs> uh, <okay>. for them. <laughs> so, when we go to, to them and selling the uh, crypto payments, uh, this is one of the very important points that the chargebacks uh, didn't, exist in, in, in blockchain and um, the things that we do is more like we educate them. Uh, this was our uh, main mission in the last uh, seven years to um, tell them to accept this new payment, uh, payment method because it's, uh, it's safe, it's, uh, uh, it's back free, it's not... Um, Fraud, it's fraud free. Yeah, yeah. Okay, for um, um, products that cost a lot of uh, a lot of money, we do a very serious uh, KYC. Uh, so uh, this uh, payment method it's uh, it's very safe from okay. our point of. And uh, to respond to to the last topic, they receive fiat, so the volatility is not on their back. And uh, when they make the payment. Uh, we uh, let them uh, 10 minutes, just 10, meeti 10 minutes to make, uh, to scan and send us the, the crypto. So in 10 minutes, of course, we don't have uh, very big changes uh, at the price. Yeah, so uh, at a certain point we mentioned acquiring banks and uh, now adding banks also to, to this story because uh, processing payments involves uh, their part also. Peter, Christian, because you are developing uh, an app that uh, is addressing also this, uh, this segment. Uh, how can banks and financial institutions tap into this, uh, this potential and what role should they play when yeah, processing payments for? I will let Christian speak because I spoke too much. So. <laughs> <laughs> I already got from my colleagues. <laughs> Uh, so the biggest problem now with uh, cryptocurrencies is that uh, uh, if you use an exchange, if you use, uh, I don't know, a cryptocurrency platform, uh, when you need to withdraw or pay something, uh, you need to withdraw to your other bank account from another uh, app from another bank. Uh, it involves time, 
Sometimes uh, one day if it is a uh, SEPA transaction or two, three days if it's a SWIFT transaction. Uh, it involves, uh, of course, KYC and AML. Uh, but here, uh, neobanks like us come in and uh, bridging uh, this gap between fiat and cryptocurrency, making it very simple and seamless. You can exchange crypto directly into your bank account uh, without uh, going through the process of KYC and AML because you did it already. Uh, of course, if there is a, a large sum of money that are being transferred, you need to do it once, uh, the, the process. But uh, after that, you can go from crypto to fiat and uh, back and forth without a problem. This is where I think uh, neo banks will come. Um, and uh, traditional banking, I think uh, it's... Uh, a bit late to the party. <laughs> so we had last night Czech Bank uh, winning something uh, by applying a blockchain technology, not necessarily to yeah to crypto payments, but uh, I think that also the yeah, traditional banks are starting to. The, for traditional banks, in order to survive, in my view, the only way to tap into this market would be partnering up with companies like Enfineo or newcomers in the market. Because it will be for them, it will be difficult to uh, to manage. In all honesty, you cannot transform a very traditional way of conducting business where there are a lot of traditional regulations in place, which then don't take into account technology and don't embed technology in the new regulations. So, in my view, it will be really difficult for them to uh, to be able to go as fast as technology goes. Okay. And Stefan, are you still with us? Because, uh, yes. yeah, we wanted to, to, to know, in a way, to sum up uh, regarding this discussion of accepting crypto payments for, for merchants. So, what, dri what drives uh, crypto ad adoption for them? Um, so, besides uh, educating uh, them more, could also be the use of NFTs or other, uh, yeah, innovative uh, ways of tapping into Web3? Uh, in my opinion, merchants don't care about this. Merchants care only about what they sell, and if they think they have a higher chance of selling more because they implement a new payment methodology, as long as the implementation uh, is worth the costs, which is why it's, it's, it's worth it to work with um, a third party instead of implementing your own solution and leaving all the KYC troubles and everything to the, to the third party because they can spread out the cost across multiple clients, um, I think that's the, that's the only real motivation for them, basically opening up to a new market. I think that's why the automotive industry did this, uh, because you would see tiers of uh, crypto investors that you could split amongst them by um, the amount of returns they had. And there were a lot of people that made enough money to buy cars, and they were specifically in the segment of wealth that if they would have tapped into any new money soon, the, one of the first things they would buy is cars. So therefore, again, it's just uh, putting up to a slightly new to, market. To make here a, a small observation, Horia didn't mention about buying uh, Dacia Logan. He mentioned about expensive cars and uh, oh. real estate. So I think it, here is not necessarily... It was a, a, an electrical BMW uh, that so was... So I think <laughs> it's also a mean of investing more, not necessarily... We're talking about average, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. No, I don't think, I don't think uh, cars are investment plays. <laughs> Uh, BMWs are not investment plays and Lamborghinis <laughs> are not investment plays. Uh, they are uh, ego purchases. Um, and I think they fit exactly in the, in the niche of um, I've now got access to this, I'm going to buy it as quickly as possible. Invest, uh, sorry, real estate is indeed a different, uh, a different idea. And um, I think for real estate, you can easily look at it as uh, investments. But I'm not sure how much... Um, I, I think within the real estate market, the biggest reason why you would use crypto would be um, to cut down on the overhead of the acquisition cost, whatever that may be. And I think that will only work sustainably over the future, over the longer term, if, if payment providers, uh, if, medi if the mediators find a way to um, come up with a cost-efficient solution. Otherwise, I don't see the big difference. Yeah. So, because we don't have too much time left, uh, everyone wants to know about the trends. 
And I would like uh, every one of you to say in, in, what, uh, sen in one sentence, uh, what does the future hold in terms of crypto adoption from all the people involved in this space? Consumers, merchants, PSPs, uh, regulation, regulators. So are we going to use it not mostly for investment? I think the process will be hard. We open a little gate to this with our equipment with the application go go crypto on, on our but uh, will be hard and will be a long time uh, process my message is very very short and clear keep your eyes keep your eyes wide open and be prepared because the crypto is coming and you cannot avoid it um, I'm not saying that it's coming, it's already here in any form, so it's something that we cannot deny and what we need to get accustomed with is that it's here to stay. Obviously regulations will come and what we need to be prepared for is actually how those regulations will be. And I strongly believe that as long as we develop regulations from behind a desk and don't check, have the reality check, then those uh, regulations might hit big. But the idea is that digital assets, digital currencies are here to, say, to stay and are going to be used widely and they are going to become mainstream at certain point. Uh, from my point of view, I think uh, uh, if regulations come and I want, to come, uh, I want them to come uh, early, uh, I think then uh, the adoption will be greater than it is now. Because people will uh, look at crypto from the safe side, they will not uh, look uh, uh, seeing it at as I know black or green ma gray market as it uh, is seen. So go regulations. Yeah. <laughs> I have the same opinion as uh, uh, as anyone else. Goes twice. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, it will be a long journey, but uh, with uh, regulation will be much faster. The adoption will be much faster. Yeah. And Stefan, what does your crystal ball say? <laughs> I haven't consulted the crystal ball. Uh, I'll just use the meat one in my head. Um, I would put it like this. I think one of the biggest concerns right now with the for the evolution of the crypto space is being able to reach a point in which um, use cases become more stable and widely adopted in terms of how quickly they appear and how quickly they disappear. Uh, if, they're, if they're not sustainable. I think we, um, a lot of people are uh, hoping that adoption will come, uh, mass adoption will come after this happens, or actually no, a lot of people are hoping that it will come before, but I, I, I doubt that will be the case. I think in, if we look at it from a payment standpoint strictly, I think the only leg that crypto has to stand on for true mass adoption and being able to take a large portion of the market share of the payments market, which is absolutely huge and obviously dominated by, uh, by fiat as of this point, is if it brings upon a truly better user experience. Currently, it seems like um, the advancement of regulation uh, posts, poses a threat towards the user experience of crypto as a whole. While I do fundamentally agree with regulation, I think it should uh, come into place. I believe the crypto market uh, in, in their um, efforts to, uh, to take this further should, uh, should be able to defend, should, should strive to defend uh, specifically the user experience standpoint of using crypto and should, be, and should attempt to incorporate it within literally day-to-day -day culture, uh, making it a widely acceptable thing instead of uh, uh, the current strategy which is expanding with um, uh, things that bring huge hopes for high revenues, for, for very high returns. I think the focus should be on UX. And personally, I believe that only after that can we see true mass adoption in its literal sense of the word uh, for cryptos in uh, the payment space. OK. So with this, we can conclude that crypto is here to stay. And that's all, folks. Thank you for uh, being with us today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.